Hi kids, it's me, Miss Colleen again. And I just was thinking a few weeks ago, Heidi King shared some really cool things with you about birds. I thought maybe we could revisit those birds again today and look at some of the other amazing things about them that God designed. Birds are one of my favorite parts of God's creation, and I like to study the life cycle of birds as well. It's pretty interesting to watch a bird and see how it establishes its territory and then it begins to look for a mate. Now, some of them might show off their gorgeous iridescent feathers like the ruby-throated hummingbird, but sometimes a bird will use his voice instead. Sometimes the male might sing a loud, powerful song like the red-winged blackbird. Listen to this. Here it is. Or it might be a beautiful song like this, nor this northern house wren. I love his song. And then the male and the female birds start their masterpiece, their nest. And I want to read this verse, these verses from the Bible that talk about that. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young. A place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. That was from Psalm 84. Isn't that a cool verse? Now, you might want to ask, what is a nest? Do you all know? Some people might think that it's a bird's house, but it's really more like a cradle or the nursery for the bird. Most birds don't live in their nest year round. They just use them during the nesting season. The nest they make will provide a safe shelter for their eggs and later their chicks. Now birds can use a lot of things to build a nest. Some of those things might be twigs and sticks or dead leaves, maybe pebbles, sometimes mud, or even hair or fur or feathers. And birds create many different kinds of nests. While the same species will always create the same sort of a nest structure, you see, birds can't change their minds and invent new styles like we can. But there is a great variety among all the types of nests. And I'll show you a picture of some of them. Okay. Now, these are the types. There's a scrape, a platform, a dome, a pendant, a cup, and a cavity. But there are some birds who use burrows underground, like the puffin or a burrowing owl, and even kingfishers or not even any nest. And that's sort of like some of the birds like an emperor penguin or a peregrine falcon. They just lay their eggs out in the open or maybe in a hidden away spot. And then there's the brown headed cowbird. He doesn't build a nest. He just puts his eggs in somebody else's nest. Now I was going to describe each of those nests a little for you. The scrape is actually on the ground and the bird just kind of digs things up like stones and dirt and builds his nest that way. And that's the kind of nest a killdeer makes. The next one was a platform. That's where they have a very high flat place that they build. And around Ithaca anyways, people have been building lots of platforms for osprey to nest. And there are a, over a hundred now around Cayuga Lake. That's amazing. A dome nest, we usually don't find them because they're hidden in the grass and it looks like a cup laying on its side and the babies and the eggs are on the inside and that way they're safe from the rain. Then there was the pendant nest. That's the one that kind of hangs down. Have you ever seen a Baltimore Oriole? They built pendant nests. Then the last two are the cup nest. And actually, I have lots of examples of those I'm going to show you later. But we know American robins, and they build cup nests. They're sort of like a cup like this. And they can be anywhere. 
and we're going to see some later. The last kind that we showed you a picture of was a cavity nest. And that is the kind of nest that many birds like bluebirds and house sparrows and woodpeckers, but especially chickadees. And I want you to keep listening for that word later because that comes into the rest of our story today. Now, I have found several nests around my yard. This nest box has a house wren's nest inside of it. And if you like, I'll open it up and let you look inside. You can. Maybe I'll see more. And we also have several nests inside this barn that we use as a garage and a storage place. The robins come in here and build along the edges of the rafters. And last year, a robin left its nest and some morning doves moved in, laid their eggs, and we even caught a picture of the babies as they were ready to fledge or fly out of the nest. Can you see up above that bike tire there is a nest and that is where one of the robins built its nest last year and it's waiting for next year's new occupants and here is one more nest that's on the top of that swing seat you can see some of the material hanging down behind and below and that is where a carolina wren had its nest this year now, one thing we've noticed is that every kind of nest has its advantages and its disadvantages. We're going to look at a cup nest now. It is easy to build, but it's usually more in the open, so it's easy for predators to get into it. This is a robin's cup nest. This robin's cup nest is in a place that's very easy for a chipmunk to climb up, and one of them did and it ate all the eggs. That was sad. Now, these are some cup nests that are a little easier for you to see than the robin's nest. And I can't really tell you what, which bird made each one, but I just thought that these are really cool. This one is made of mostly mud with grass woven in it. This one, do you see how it's right on those twigs and it's attached and it's much smaller than the robin's nest. I wonder how small a bird could fit in there. Oh, this nest has a surprise in it for you. They don't both belong in there, but we found these eggshells under some other nests in our yard and I thought you'd like to see some of those as well. And this is the nest that I know who made this. This nest, do you see, it's got beautiful moss and it's got sticks and twigs and mud. And in the top of it, you can see something silvery and white. And guess what? The Phoebes who live in our yard, we, they used to come and we would put out our hair for the Phoebes. And if you didn't notice, I have that silvery hair that the Phoebes chose for their nest. Now, I didn't mention it, but when we were looking at the house wren's nest, that was actually a cavity nest. A cavity nest is difficult for predators to find and get into it. The disadvantage of cavity nests, though, is that it's hard for birds to find good ones. And that's why we put up our nest boxes. When you put up a nest box, you help the cavity nesting birds. But you know, once we had a little bird that found its own awesome tree hole for a nest, and it was a chickadee. Let's talk about him. Did you know there are seven chickadees in the U.S., seven species of chickadees? There's a mountain, a boreal, a Carolina, a gray-headed, a Mexican, a chestnut backed, and a black-capped chickadee, like this one. Can you hear that call? Isn't that cute? I love chickadees. I think of them as cheerful little birds as they fly back and forth looking for yummy insects to eat up in the tree leaves. 
and they're always so funny at our bird feeders as they grab one sunflower seed, fly nearby to crack it open against a branch, then return for another seed and start the whole process all over again. We even have a favorite little chickadee we named Baldy. See, Baldy must have had an accident with some cat or another animal because he came to our feeders one day with a piece of skin and the feathers still attached and hanging down off of his forehead. That's called a crown on a bird, by the way. And for weeks, he kept coming. And now he just has a brightish pink bald spot. And that's how he got his name, <laughs> Baldy. I did try to get a picture of Baldy, but like I mentioned, he never sits still for very long at the windowsill feeder. But maybe you can see another picture of him late, a picture of some chickadees later. And I have one thing to show you about the awesome home that a chickadee found on our property. This little hole in this log is the home that the chickadee found. This was a decaying quaking aspen that was growing at the edge of our lawn. And this was the chickadee's hole and how it got in. Now watch as I turn this around. And in the back, we made a bigger hole because you see this whole thing fell over after that year when the chickadee nested in it. And my sons said, what a great 4-H project, Mom. So we made a hole so that you and put a light underneath so you could see where the chickadee's nest was on the inside of this log. Thanks, kids, for coming today. I hope you learned something, and I hope you'll always remember these nifty nests and the cheerful chickadees that God made that we can enjoy. And hope to see you sometime soon again. Bye.